Welcome to Frank Prince Show, live from Madhouse TV Studio. I'm your host, Frank Prince. Last week, I had special guest Christine Lopiano from another TV show from Madhouse TV, Martini Garden. Thank you so much for being on my show. And I really want to thank the viewers for watching. I love you all. And if you want to join my group, um, the Frank Print Show on Facebook, I have that opened up. And uh, if you need to get in touch with me, you want to say hi, you could email me at the Frank Print Show at yahoo.com. Anyway, I have with me special <coughs> guest comedian, Rich Walker. Hey! Hey, Rich! Great being here, Frank. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, so this is really, really nice. Good luck Thank to you. you on the show. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. When did you, um, you do stand-up comedy, correct? I do stand-up okay. comedy, yep. I've been doing it now for 19 years. Um, actually, how I started stand-up comedy, right. um, if it was, I've always wanted to be a comedian like all of us a whole life, Absolutely. right? I'm sure you wanted to do it your yes. whole life. And I would have never uh, actually have done it if I didn't slip in the winter, break my ankle on ice. I was home from work for three months. And um, uh, what happened was my, whole, my foot was actually on backwards. And they had to correct it. So I was in the hospital for, uh, for well, about a week, week and a half. Uh, but then I came home. I was home from work for three, week, uh, three months. And uh, I had a cast on. My friends picked me up, took me to a comedy club. And uh, no names. And uh, we saw three of the worst comedians probably ever. So we were that annoying table that was laughing so hard, you know, that right. almost being rude to everybody else. So my friends go, you could do that, you could do that, you could do that. So I started writing, being that I'm home, I started writing my material. And, uh, and then I went to an open mic night called the Long Island Cafe in Bayshore. And I did my first night, I went on stage, I did 15 minutes not realizing how long I was going on. They were giving me the light and everything. I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> right. And I did it, and, uh, and it was history. And then it was uh, a comedian by the name of uh, uh, Joe Starr came over to me. Oh, he was okay. hosting. Yes. And he came o over to me, and he goes, you know, you're really, really good. He goes, we'd like to have you back next week. I'm like, wow, he wants me back next week. Uh, but then he threw in the golden words, come back next week, bring all your friends and family. You know, well, so that's right. the ongoing yeah. joke. You got to yes. bring your friends and family. So uh, I was back next week, and I had a whole table of people to see me, and I was hooked into comedy ever since. Do you have a similar story? How, uh, yes, yes, I have a similar story. I always, yeah. we met at Stefano's. Stefano's, the restaurant, restaurant right? Restaurant in right, Copeg. Right. Yeah. And I remember you there. Yeah. Um, Ann Kissel was there. Right. I think Chris Monty was there. I, you know, Ann there was, Kissel? Yeah. From Connecticut, she was there. She's too, in yeah. Florida now. She's yeah, doing yeah. a Roseanne Bar bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of people, and you came up to me. We, I, cause I was there to see a friend of mine, one man band. Right. And right. Uh, it's like, what's comedy? You know, I was shy back then. I didn't know, but I always wanted to do it. Right. And you wrote, and I'm like, I don't think I could do this, but, but then, I always wanted to. But then it was funny because me and you, and I, I remember. We ran into each other a lot. All the time. Dollar stores we, in dollar Deer store, Park. I go, hey, it's Frank, you know, Frank Prince. And I, I said, you know, Frank, I said, when are you going to start doing comedy? You go, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it. And it I, got, so I, I got the push from Vince D'Antona. He was right. my mentor. Oh, he was He's best. like, you know, there's a school I, I recommend. And I says, okay, what is it? And it was Stand Up University. And... I said, who runs it? Rich Walker. And I got all excited because we're running in and, you know, and I'm like, I got to try this. And right. And it's an avenue, avenue. to start where you're right. with other people who have never done it before. Right. Right. And uh, we're, we're proud of it. And we're so glad we're proud of you. Look at this. I mean, you've taken a class and now you have a TV show. It's like unbelievable how this business works. <laughs> right? Everything ties in together. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it's like. How's my comedy going? Like my GPS recalculating, <laughs> you know? <laughs> always recalculating. Always, you always. That in your act? That's really funny. I do. <laughs> but uh, it's good. We're having fun on this show. That's what it's about. Yeah, I see Laughter, that. Laughter, yeah. no <laughs> teleprompters. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere where the host can ride a tricycle right. on the show, oh you know God. it's funny. So but, um, you. you know, 
How do you write material? Where does that come from? You know what happens? I, I think in the beginning, when you first start comedy, I mean, maybe you could help me out with this. You start, you, you always sit down and, and you, you sometimes, you'll have a funny thought and then you'll sit down and you'll write it, you know, out. Jerry Seinfeld says sit down every day and write for an hour if you can. Uh, every comedian's different though. I, I can't write my material like that. If I get a thought, mm -hmm. I'll be driving in the car and I'll do it 10 different ways in my head. Right. And then I'll go out and I'll try it on my next show, you know, whenever okay. I can, you know. Um, but, you know, it, it's... Uh, it's really funny because you know, it's it just, I, I mean, I could, I could be shopping, I could be, uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, I could be swimming in a pool, I'm like, oh, it's really funny, you know, if I see what the lifeguard is doing, you know. That's what I go by. I don't really write. You don't I write. Gotta, I got to start writing yeah. something. It's I have a card where I chicken scratch, like a thought, mm -hmm. and then I'll go home and I'll write it, you know, write down just that thought, and then every night it takes different form, you know that. Every, Absolutely. When you go on stage, it could be... The audience will always tell you where the laugh is. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you you write a long bit and it's got da 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 da, and then the audience will actually cut it down to what's funny or the essence of what's right. funny. I think. I mean, you yeah. could go for a big story and take up like fifteen minutes in a story. You have to chop everything down. Cut the fat. Cut the fat. Yeah, and that's what we yeah. try to do. With, you know, the stand-up university class. So. Now, um, when did that start, Stand Up University? Well, we've been doing it now, you ready, Frank? 15 years. We have over 700 graduates, and, but only a handful stay in the comedy business. Um, like you. So you, it's like... It's nerve-wracking, i got to really tell you. But Thank God for my full-time job, but... But when you're you on know, that stage, there's absolutely. nothing like being on that Everything stage. Everything goes... And you're in the moment on the stage. You forget about everything, everything. else in life, and uh, and it's, it's just really it's an amazing art form. People don't see it as an art form, stand up comedy. They see it as you know, like if you run into somebody in the store, they go, "Hey, I saw you in the comic club. Tell me a joke." Well, well, uh, you know, well, you're a dancer. Dance for me. You know, that's it's just like a weird people kind of do thing. that. You know, yeah, because they, they know you're a comedian. Tell you, especially at a picnic or a barbecue. You know, be funny. Go ahead, do one of your things. How do you do things? You know, I had an old boss that used to say to me, um, he goes, oh, you're still doing your bits, your little bits? He, like, belittled it. Like, he hated, like, he thought I was wasting my time doing stand-up comedy. Little did he know that I'd be pulling in maybe 15000 a year. Mm -hmm. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but it all <laughs> depends. But, you know, like... I know. Uh, I know. He, he was a big corporate businessman. A lot of people don't understand stand-up comedy. It's like being an artist. You know, you, want, you paint because you love painting. Right. You know? You've got to have the passion. comes from the heart. That's you know, right. People tell me, keep your day job, you know, and that makes me want it more, to that's work right. harder. And that's what I do. Well, and then, you know, and the, you, know, with they, you know what a, a comedy club owner years and years ago, his name was Seth Schultz. He owned uh, Pips in Brooklyn. Okay. And he it was so nice to me. I was doing comedy for six months, and he spent two hours on the phone with me, this guy. And he said to me that um, never tell people outside the comedy world um, what you're doing because they don't understand it. They don't understand what a million dollars an episode means. Mm -hmm. Nor could they ever right. fathom what a million dollars an episode means. And this is what we are all, you know, we're that squirrel trying to get that nut. You know, trying, we're all, we all think we could do this. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's, tr it is, it's reachable because for whatever reason it is, and it doesn't have to be your comedy act, it could be your character, your persona that they see for a television show. They'll go, wow, that Frank Prince has got something, you know? And then mm -hmm. they'll, I want him. They got writers. They have writers they have, for TV shows. Right. They have all that. They're not worried about the writing. They just want to see you for that character. And that's what we're all hoping for. That's what we all strive to, uh, to get, you know. Where were some of the places you performed? Oh, wow. I've, I think I've, I've covered uh, every... What does Humphrey Bogart <laughs> say? I've done every dive joint and whatever. <laughs> um, I've stood on a... Uh, there was a divider that separated two rooms, the, the, the uh, area where we had the show and the bar area, but nobody was in our area. So we stood on top of the divider, which was about a, a foot wide. That was it. And all the comedians were standing up there, and we looked like the, uh, you know, the men on the building on that yes. beam? Yeah. I mean, that's how we looked doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> we didn't care, just so we could be closer to the people at the bar, you know? Right. 
but all everywhere you know we we i'm you know i'm i'm on the same road as you i'm just a little bit you know a little bit ahead but you know it, it's it's you you do all these these dives and bars and tell me and about coffee it. shops oh. and uh but you know what that's where you develop that's where that's where you sharpen your claws mm -hmm. right and then when you are in front of that theater in front of you know four or five hundred people it's like annihilation it's like boom right. like all that work and it's it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress and but once you hit like we said over and over once you hit that stage that's it everything you are blank. the star and also after the show when everybody's mm -hmm. coming up to you giving you the accolades how great you were and how great so up to the show time is work but show time on right. is play it's and waiting time. to go on that's, that's right. really that's right you know i tried things in the city waited two hours to go on and I was so psyched to get there. I'm waiting to go on. But then I'm feeling like crap. I had to separate myself. It's yeah. just like, wow, you just never experienced that. Yeah. But I wanted to because yeah. it makes you me want to wanna work it more. Did you ever like audition for like Last Comic Standing or no, anything? I I, I, years and years ago, I auditioned. It was se season two of Last Comic Standing. And I get to Madison Square Garden. I wait online at 7 o'clock in the morning. And 7 o'clock at night, they go, okay, Rich, I'm on a line. It just didn't end. And you got to know everybody on that line, you know, because the cameras were going up and down, taking pictures of everybody and video of everybody. And, uh, and I get there 7 o'clock at night. They call me in, and they go, okay, Rich. And I did one joke. I said, my wife, blah, 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 blah. Thanks, Rich. And, you know, I didn't realize they were looking for comics to live in a house. You know, at that time, they had all the comics in the house on the show. And once I said wife, it was over. Like, they don't yeah. want, oh, he's got a wife at home, was going to be on the set or, or whatever, you know. So it's just, it's just, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. And, but you know what it is? The comics or the comedians, I think in the end, have the last laugh. And um, uh, it, it pays off. It pays off. Look, 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 me, I've never made it to the point where I'd like to make it with a TV show or in the movies or whatever. But I can't replace any of this time with anything else. No. No way. No way. I, you know, we're all already, you know, well, both of us are living a life that people, like, dream of. Like, even just to be in, you know, they say that public speaking is the number one fear in human nature. You know, yes. even death is second. You know, Jerry Seinfeld said that people would rather be the guy in the box than be the guy reading the eulogy, you know. Yes. So we are doing something that I think is and it's valuable. We love doing it. We love getting the laughs. But it also, for the audience, they come up to you after the show and say, I needed that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I needed that this week. Without comedians, there wouldn't be laughter. Yeah. Just, it wouldn't. you know, be a sad Just world. funny, the funny cousin at right. your house at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, it's all crafted and fun and we do it, yeah. Now, Stand up university. What's consistent with that? Like, how does that work? Stand up university uh, is a uh, is a, a class that we started 15 years ago. Uh, two other comedians, uh, uh, Steve Lazarus. Uh, he's the Steve, the beer man, Lazarus, the Yankee vendor. And then we have uh, Peter Bales, who's, who's uh, pr primarily our principal of the, okay. uh, the class or, or the head teacher, and. Uh, and uh, he's done. He's 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 worked with Rosie O'Donnell, Bob Nelson. I mean, everybody. You know, in his early years, before any of them were famous. But we went to. Uh, he used to host the show, uh, his own open mic, and he started to notice that the comedians were getting dirtier and dirtier, and comedy was stand-up comedy was start, starting to go south a little okay. bit, or brick wall stand-up comedy they call it, and. Uh, and he, uh, he asked me and Steve if we could put together a class to start teaching comedians to go the right direction, to start, you know, not to say that, you know, risque material, it, it's great. You know, you got Louis C.K. and all that stuff. But to teach the fundamentals of comedy, which right. nobody really knows, or the base of stand-up comedy. So we started uh, 15 years ago, and we've been doing it ever since. And, and you know, we were, we were uh, lucky enough to have the New York Times wrote a story on us and Newsday and News 12. It really, it took off. 
And, uh, but we've been launching careers. We've got guys out there that uh, are playing in Vegas and Reno and, and Atlantic City and, and uh, uh, just doing amazing. And not only in stand-up comedy, they're out doing other parts other of things. the entertainment right. business, whether it's producing or whether it's uh, um, uh, you know, directing and, and, and writing and writing for shows and stuff. And yeah. some guys get their own TV shows. Yeah. Like you. So uh, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a win-win. Standupuniversity.com uh, if anybody's ever interested in taking it. Well, so. speaking of the TV show, we're going to take a commercial break. Sit back, relax your slacks, release your sleeves, and we'll be back more with comedian Rich Walker. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and Ronkonkoma, New York, and we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patients' cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to pr improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. We're back live with comedian <coughs> Rich Walker. So, Rich, I have to ask you, why stand up comedy? Why stand up? Why stand up? Why stand up comedy? comedy? You know, a lot of people ask me that after shows. They come up to me and they say, "Why? Why you become a stand up comedian?" But you know, it is they they say that there's something either tragic or something happened as a child that would make you crave this love from an audience. You know, and uh, you know. If you ask any comedian, if you could trace it back, I actually traced it back, I think. I was seven years old, had a birthday party at a, uh, an amusement park 
uh, called Jolly Rogers and Beth Page. It was like a little kitty amusement park. I don't know if you remember that. And um, <clears throat> so my, my mom invited, you know, like 12 kids to my birthday. And for whatever reason it was, uh, none of them could make it. Right. <clears throat> and uh, I remember being in the party room. And I, it was eight kids, I'm sorry. It was, and it was in a party room. And I remember sitting at the end, the big chair at the mm -hmm. end, and all empty plates on each side of the table with no kid, with uh, uh, birthday party hats okay. uh, on each plate, and, but no kids sitting under them, you know? And I remember going on the, uh, like the merry-go-round, and I was the only kid on there. And I remember going around, and there were other kids that wanted to get on the ride, but the hostess kept going, no, 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 this is a birthday party. Okay. You know, yeah. and I was by myself. So I remember going around, and I remember waving at my mom, and she'd wave back. And I went around again. I waved at my mom, and she waved back. And went around, and I waved at my mom, and, and she was gone. And um, uh, but for good reason. I found out in my twenties um, that um, uh, the reason why she left. Her best friend' son had his birthday party that okay. day, and she had to go to that party, which is understandable. Uh, so we worked it out. And um, actually, none of that ever happened to make you feel better. Um, I just say that for the, to charge <laughs> up the audience. So you know what's funny? Um, the one good thing that came out of that whole thing is that my mom said for two weeks we had plenty of pizza. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> that's terrible. This is, uh, I, I don't know why I choose to do that material <laughs> when there's no audience. <laughs> no. Where the audience? <laughs> We're making yeah. this show. At least everybody that's at home's <laughs> going, what? That's the saddest <laughs> story I've ever heard. <laughs> So, but yeah. I see you have your coffee. Yeah, oh my God. I love coffee, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know what's funny? Yesterday I went around drive through with McDonald's. You ever get coffee at McDonald's? Absolutely. And right away the girl wants to pick a fight with me. I go around drive through and I say, one medium hot coffee. She goes, one hot cocoa. <laughs> what grown man is ordering cocoa? Do you order cocoa? No. And who's going, you know, I feel like a good hot cup of cocoa. So then I say, coffee, C O F F E E. And she said, uh, no, sir, you're wrong. It's Coco. C-O-C-O-A. <laughs> you know, I want, co I want coffee. She wants to hold a spelling bee. So I go around drive through Frank, and uh, there's my coffee right in the window. But right next to it is a big bag of food like this. I said, this girl's so stupid. She's going to give me that bag of food. And I don't care what's in it. You know, right. it could be quarter pound cheese, egg McMuffin. We don't care, do no. we? No. no. And it. I figured out why. Uh, first of all, if she gave it to me, uh, I figured out it's not stealing if they give it to you. No. No. So that's the window opening for the viewers at home that don't know that, you know, that's comedy. So the, the window opens, out comes the cup of coffee through their window and through my window in the holster next to me. But sure enough, there goes her hands for the bag of food out their window and through my window on the seat next to me. I am now looking straight forward, power window up. And I'm driving away going, you idiot, you're so stupid. How do they hire morons like you? How do they make any money with idiots like you? So I go to the first light, see what I got? I open up the bag, cream and sugar. <laughs> and what I learned in the next light for my hot cocoa. So go figure that out. But I can never win. Backfire. Like, yes, it does backfire. So It happens. Uh, the, the day in the life of Rich Walker is my adventure. Everywhere I go, it's trouble. <laughs> You like this shirt? I love this shirt. This shirt, it's really funny because uh, I'm self-conscious of it. Because mm -hmm. I only, I, I got it for $6.40 at Kohl's. And you ever buy shirts at Kohl's? This was on that sale rack that is so thick. You can't even get your fingers in mm -hmm. to push the shirts aside, you know. So it actually had like 75 yellow and red stickers all over it. And I picked off each one till I got down to $6.40. That's <laughs> how bad it is. Um, but I love Kohl's. You ever bring stuff back to Kohl's? You ever get gifts oh, yeah. at Christmas? And especially after Christmas, they got that old lady sitting at a table. You know, she's by herself with a long line of people. Uh -huh. She just takes the stuff and throws it behind her into that big mountain of clothing. Get another one. You know, get another one. And then she goes, we're going to sell all this crap, all this for $6.40. So, uh, but my house, we love Kohl's. We do. I don't mean to knock it, you know, on TV. But, like, we fight who's going to get the circular. You ever oh, get the circulars? The circulars. Oh, yeah. and pulling the, pulling the sticker. Like, <laughs> please, God, 30%. Please, God, 30%. Ah! 15%. <laughs> I'm not shopping at Kohl's this week. <laughs> They're not getting my money. So. 
That's it. That's my life. And, and you uh, were at the Patchogue Theater? Patchogue Theater. Patchogue Theater is weird theater, Patchogue. Uh, you know why? Because like, you, really, you really know when that audience loves you, mm -hmm. and you know when they don't like a joke either, because they don't mess around. You could hear it in that room, you know? And uh, the, the night I was there, they actually had soda and popcorn in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And let's just say one of my jokes didn't go over. Play along. Yes. And, uh, no, it's a joke. But, uh, <laughs> but way in the back, I lay out a punchline, nothing. But way in the back, in like row M, Frank, I could actually hear this guy. The silence on my joke was so bad, I could hear this guy pull the straw out of his cup. It went, <laughs> <laughs> Now he decides to play a song for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this guy was good. Even I'm screaming, get out of the water! How rude was that? So, that's it. Uh, my day, the, every day I walk around, that's what I get. That's chaos. Chaos. Is your day, day chaotic? Chaotic. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, it's so funny. I, uh, now, how can people get in touch with you to book you for a show? Oh, that's or, nice. Uh, well, if you go... A, Thank you. Go my, ahead. My, uh, it's richwalkerlive.com is my website, Rich Walker Live. And uh, if you're interested in taking a comedy class, if you're funny, your friends tell you funny, funny and you want to do stand-up comedy, uh, 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 go to standupuniversity.com, and you can register right online. All your questions will be answered. Uh, and our classes run throughout the year. We have two more classes before the summer. And then we'll start up again in September. So uh, we'd love to have you in our class and uh, get you on that stage doing stand-up comedy in front of a real audience. And who knows, maybe you too could have your own television show like Frank Prince. That's where I came from. I'm an alumni, and I want to thank you for teaching me. Because if I didn't go we're there, the I wouldn't uh, be here. Well, we're real proud just, of you. We love you, we love you doing stand-up. I so. love you guys too. <laughs> well, it's a wrap. And I will see you April 5th, the next episode of the Frank Prince Show Live on Madhouse TV. Have a great couple of weeks, and thank you all for watching, and I love you all. Take care.